Good evening and welcome to Downtown Springfield Incorporated's 2010 Annual Awards Dinner, Shop Downtown. My name is Steve Thomas. I'm happy to be your host again this year. What a year 2010 was. We learned a lot in 2010. We learned that if you spill something, you should clean it up, even if it's not, quote unquote, your fault. We learned that there is global goodwill and love and concern when the world pulled together and cheered for the Chilean miners being rescued. We learned right here in Springfield, we learned that we don't need power to have fun at the blues and barbecues. <laughs> we learned that fireworks really can go higher than the buildings. And we learned that you clearly don't need a personality to be on TV with Donald Trump, just serious legal accusations. And we learned that whatever you do, if you're in the NBA, don't better your chances at a winning championship by joining a team that could possibly get you there. I mean, what a stupid career move that would be. And now we are learning that the way to build your city is to invite the poor people from the surrounding states to join yours. And that beckons the question, could Illinois really kick Indiana's butt in a war? I think so. Well, be that as it may, 2010 was a great year. Even in the face of economic adversity, we've maintained our momentum by looking toward the future with optimism in the areas of retail, tourism, rehabilitation, and new construction, and by striving to be the destination of choice for shopping, dining, cultural activities, and successful business ventures. 2011 will be no different. It'll be a great year. Now to make some comments and some introductions. I would like to introduce the current board president of Downtown Springfield Incorporated, Jane Mosley Nicoletta. Please welcome Jane to the stage. Got to make sure it has all the good stuff in there. Wow, we have a good crowd tonight. I think that this has to be some kind of a record for attendance. This is awesome. Give yourselves a hand. Thank you. Well, I sat down over the weekend to write my speech, and I had this great speech prepared, and I was going to call it Outlook 2011. And then I opened the paper on Sunday, and I've been scooped by the Journal Register. <laughs> Thanks, you know. All right, still, I think there's so many things to look forward to for 2011. Um, I'm just going to run through some of the things that are my observations. We have elections coming up this spring uh, that herald a new administration in City Hall. And we also have a number of strong candidates running for uh, aldermanic positions. You may have met a few of those during the cocktail hour. They were the ones shaking as many hands as possible. That's great. We can look forward to some revitalization efforts in our surrounding neighborhoods. The Enos Park organization has showed renewed vigor and promise to continue their efforts uh, to improve this historic neighborhood to our north. Another exciting development is the, to our southeast, the Neighborhoods of Hope project has laid out exciting plans and dreams for a renewed east side, including new homes and townhouses, an expansion of the new Capitol College Preparatory Academy and the Feichens building. There's talk about a new building for the Matheny Withrow Elementary School and they're planning new green spaces and investment in businesses with the hopes of drawing all of Springfield to their doorstep. Just ask Tim Rawls and uh, Alderman Gail Simpson, they'll tell you all about it. In the heart of downtown, the History Comes Alive program has gotten word of renewed funding for 2011. This, along with the events that are planned by the National Park Service and the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library in commemoration of the bicentennial of the, of the Civil War point to another banner year of historic tourism in Springfield. Discussion continues regarding the high-speed rail in Springfield. While plans have not been finalized, it appears that the efforts of DSI members and our colleagues in the Enos Park area have been heard by the authorities, and we hope to continue our efforts to convince them that the Third Street Corridor should be taken from consideration as an avenue and that one of the other quarters should be developed. Thank you. 
We have a number of TIF projects that have been approved recently, including the, expand, the renovation of the Prairie Capital Convention Center, the uh, additional funding to help with the development of the Isaac and Obed uh, properties on 7th Street. Also, the Renaissance Architects has a new project that's being developed for 2nd and Adams Street that should be really exciting and provide some additional housing as well as business spaces on the ground floor. And I understand that there are two new projects that are under consideration by the City Council right now. So a lot of good development and good progress going on in the downtown area. Finally, I've received work plans from most of our committee chairs and they're brimming with enthusiasm and great ideas for the coming year. Imogen Design has set its dates for the 2011 Upper Stories Tour. We also have a new chairman for the tour in Alex Block of Renaissance Architects, so we're, we're delighted to have him helping us with that. The committee also has developed ideas for a recycling program for the downtown businesses. In the near future, we hope to offer corrugated cardboard and colored glass recycling to help our downtown businesses be more green and to reduce their operating costs all at the same time. It's awesome. Business Retention is planning to conduct a thorough survey of the downtown businesses and residents so that we'll have current statistics on downtown demographics. And this will help us better market the historic downtown area to uh, potential businesses that would like to relocate here and to attract more residents to the downtown area. Membership has big plans to attract new business memberships some of the ideas include inviting lobbying firms and business associations to join us. They've also talked about hosting new member receptions to invite residents and individuals to join the, the organization on their own. Current members are invited to any and all of these events. We'd love for you to tell your story of your successes with DSI and spread the word. Word has it that the Promotions Committee is talking about having a float in the St. Patrick's Day Parade. So you may get tapped to, to volunteer to help with that project and certainly come down for that. By popular demand, First Fridays have continued so, uh, and will continue our focuses on the downtown merchants every month. I would encourage you to come down on February 4th and every month to experience the hospitality of our restaurants and uh, pubs and our downtown merchants. While it's cold now, plans are already underway for the 2011 Old Capital Farmers Market. We plan to expand our footprint further on Adams Street and continue to have the artisans areas on Saturdays. I can't wait to taste the new strawberries and smell the freshly baked uh, bread and pies. After both of our two major summer events in 2010, I overheard people wishing that they lasted longer. Well, your wish is granted. We're gonna be expanding both of these events to encompass also the Friday evenings preceding the Saturdays that we typically have done in the past. All that and the economy appears to be rebounding based on the Journal Register's uh, wonderful articles. And as you can see, we have a lot to be excited for in 2011. Now, let's enjoy the evening. We're gonna do a little bit of a look back and see our accomplishments for 2010. Uh, but in the meantime, I think that we've got some local dignitaries that I'd like to call out. So if you hear your name, please stand up and we'll recognize you all together at the end. We have with us this evening, Mayor Frank Edwards. <laughs> Representative Rich Brower. <laughs> Tom Cavanaugh, our county treasurer. Jim Langfelder, our city treasurer. Alderman Gail Simpson. There she is. Awesome. Alderman Mark Mahoney. Alderman Sam Canman. Don Gray, representing tre uh, state treasurer Dan Rutherford. And Corey Job, representing uh, State Comptroller Judy Bartopinka. Oh, and Debbie Cimarosa, one of our uh, other aldermen. Debbie. Okay. Wonderful, thank you.
I'd also like to uh, recognize any of our uh, trustees. If you're a trustee, if you could please stand up so we could recognize your service to the DSI. Trustees of DSI. And finally, if you're a board member of DSI, please stand up so we can recognize you as well. Thank you so much for your service to this organization and also to the community at large. And with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Victoria. I just want to say that we always forget Debbie because she's like family and she's on all these committees and we just keep forgetting her as an elected official because she's one of us so my apologies to Debbie all right let me get to where we are here All right, before we honor tonight's sponsors, I wanted to take just a few moments to reflect on a couple of things that have happened in the past year and our, compliments, our, our accomplishments. I, don't, I just don't mean downtown Springfield's accomplishments, but I mean you, the employees, the employers, the small and large businesses all together. This year, from an economic standpoint, seemed more difficult for some than, than last year. And we're hoping that this year things are going to turn around a little bit. I'm happy to say that downtown is collectively holding its own when other big chain stores and large banks and many other businesses are struggling and closing up shop around the country and around our city. Downtown Springfield tackled a very big issue, literally rallied against the expansion of rail railroad freight traffic in our downtown that would close downtown treasures, both business and historic, and would change the landscape for years to come, something that we uh, it would change our downtown that we would, we would never believe what would happen. We made our voice heard and will continue to stay involved and give input to those making decisions about the future of rail in downtown Springfield. Regardless of the economy, new businesses, renovations, and innovative projects still thrive in downtown Springfield, as Jane talked about. Some of the downtown shops had record years despite the economy. We'll continue to support and assist in maintaining a strong business climate and let everyone know how special our people, our places, and our projects really are. The message for 2011 is shop downtown, make downtown your mall alternative. Let us not forget those businesses that have lined our downtown streets for many years. These businesses were the original risk takers that paved the way for many of us who currently reside in downtown Springfield. You'd be surprised to know that several downtown institutions celebrated significant and historic anniversaries this year. Let's start with the real old timers. Springfield Furniture began on Washington Street between 7th and 9th and now is located in the 600 block of Washington Street, celebrated 100 years downtown. <laughs> and Mark and Gary Kessler are the owners. I think Mark's here tonight. Hometown favorite for all of the Sweet Tooth's Pizza's Candy, 80 years. <laughs> Family owned and, and run Ace Sign Company, 70 years strong. <laughs> and Horace Mann Company, 65, 65th anniversary this last year. The Illinois Times, you know you're famous when you made it in it, <laughs> celebrated 35 years. We're very proud of them. <laughs> Curry Center Against Sexual Assault, or PCASA, our neighbors in our building, celebrated 35 years as well. <laughs> Dell's Popcorn Shop, 30 years in downtown Springfield. and new neighbors to the north of the old state capitol, King Technology, 20 years. Z Bistro, right on 6th Street, 10 years. And Tinsley Dry Goods and the Blue Door, five years. Congratulations to all of them. All of these businesses have thrived during some pretty challenging times downtown, have demonstrated their pride and commitment in so many ways to continuing to support, and support our downtown. 
We'd like to express our deep gratitude to them and thank you for all your support to this organization as well. Congratulations. Another group of greatly appreciated friends and people in our community are, are tw 255 volunteers that continually bless DSI every year with stepping up to the plate to help us out with these events. As you know, it's only Ann and I, it's only a staff of two, and with the projects and things that we do, our councils, our board, our volunteers are all stepping up that hour, that two hours, or that six hours a month that they put towards us. And, we are truly blessed to have that. We thank them all for the valuable time they spend with us. <laughs> Special thank you goes out to those city workers and a few hardworking, extremely hardworking people who go way beyond the 24 seven to help us make our jobs a little easier. The CWLP electricians, public works employees and city directors have revealed their own passion for downtown by being there at 6 a.m. on a farmer's market morning or meeting us to hang Christmas wreaths. They really have helped us out and we couldn't do it without them. We want to thank them especially. And, and finally, I want to thank the committee. This, this is a group, a committee that's probably been the same committee with a few additions for the last five or six years. They're very creative, as you can see by the invitations and a lot of the things that we have in this room. We do everything on a shoestring so that most of the money can go back into our promotions of downtown. But um, the committee should be listed on your screen there. But they're a great group of people and, and very creative, and, and their time is well spent throughout the six months we meet. I want to thank them especially. And I'm going to bring Steve back up here, and we're going to also give out some other awards. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you a man who has been a public servant for a very long time. He has served the city of Springfield as a fireman, eventually becoming fire chief, and then as city alderman for more than eight years. I would like to welcome to the stage Mayor Frank Edwards to make a few comments. I had to laugh. I ran into Rich Breyer coming over here, and he said to me, he goes, well, how's it going? He said, your hair's getting whiter. I said, I know. I said, uh, it's going pretty good for me, but when I'm in trouble and the media says, would you spell your last name? I go, it's B-A. Thanks, Rich. <laughs> One of the mayor mayoral candidates said to me, he said, if you'll mention my name, I'll give you five bucks. I said, Mike, I can't do that. It's the easiest 15 bucks I ever made. <laughs> Wes Barr was walking over with me and I said, man, I don't know where to start when we're talking about the state of the city. He said, get as close to the end of the speech as you can. <laughs> it's really not that funny. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me to share your annual uh, Downtown Springfield Inc. Awards. Uh, banquet tonight, it, it really is an honor to be here. DSI is more than a couple of individuals running an office and coordinating activities. DSI is all of you. It is made up of restaurant owners, shop owners, businessmen and women who love Springfield and want to keep downtown business community alive and vibrant. DSI is a prime example of the old adage, the whole is far greater than the individual parts. Everyone is pulling together, and that's what makes DSI strong. It is what makes DSI a force within our city, a force that sets the standards that other cities try to follow. Tonight, those individuals and businesses who have excelled this past year will be recognized with special awards. As far as I'm concerned, you're all award winners. Thank you. All of you have pulled together. All of you have pulled together to make our city fun and an exciting place to live. From downtown Christmas walks to the Blues and Barbecue Festival, nobody really does it better than DSI. So thanks to all of you for being here tonight. Thanks to you for believing in Springfield and helping to make our downtown such a great place to be. Thank you.
Our first award of the evening is for facade rehabilitation for the beautiful facade renovation at the historic Weber House at 925 South 7th Street, we recognize owner Patrick Growth of Incredibly Delicious. Incredibly Delicious strives to provide breads and desserts with a French pastry shop flair with highly high quality ingredients. It is their goal to create an environment where everyone is welcome and everyone feels at home. Their same approach with the restoration of the Weber House. The first priority was to maintain the integrity of the building exterior, then restore the exterior appearance to rehabilitation of the wonderful window and selection of colors that enhance the Weber's house graceful elegance. The restored Weber House will again be elegant, comfortable, and welcoming, the perfect place for incredibly delicious. Congratulations, Patrick, on an outstanding facade rehabilitation. Our award for new downtown business goes to Abe's Old Hat. Abe's opened April 2010 at 111 North 6th Street, directly across from the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library. Abe's owners, Michael and Trudy Naylor, each have over 30 years experience in the antique business as dealers, pickers, shop owners, and avid collectors. Their goal is to provide the Springfield area with a quality antique store with genuine treasures from the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries. 20 of the finest dealers display their wares in the old hat in beautiful antique showcases. Stop in for a glass of wine during First Fridays and some great treats while browsing for that one-of-a-kind item. Congratulations, Mike and Trudy, and downtown's newest addition, Abe's Old Hat for Outstanding New Business. Some event goers may have called it swine meets wine, or bacon meets bottle, or even pig and swig, but everyone called it a good time when an event attracted over 15, I'm sorry, over 500 people to downtown for an evening full of good food, local wine, and live country music. The outstanding new event goes to Pork Meets Cork, and its event co-sponsors, the Illinois Pork Producers, the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Museum and Library, and the Illinois Grape Growers and Vintners Association. <laughs> Held on the spacious lawn of Union Station Park, Pork Meets Cork featured a variety of mouthwatering specialty pork items prepared by secret recipes and donated by the Illinois Pork Producers Association. Pork Meets Cork was held in the conjunction with the temporary art exhibit in the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Museum. The exhibit was called Illinois Stories, How Vast and How Varied a Field, the Agriculture Vision of Abraham Lincoln. Congratulations to the Illinois Grape Growers, the Illinois Pork Producers, and the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Museum and Library for the award for outstanding new event, Pork Meets Cork. In today's retail environment, you've got to be creative. Widow at Windsor Antiques has 2010's most creative retail promotion with their legendary downtown French flea market event. <laughs> Returning from one of their many shopping adventures in Paris, owners Marilyn and Tom Kushak were inspired to replicate the exciting experiences of the infamous French flea markets. Widow at Windsor Antiques has been pleased to bring this cherished European tradition to Springfield. The Widow's French flea market event is a one day only and provides fun indoor and outdoor shopping with French music, festive balloons, chicory coffee, and savings from 15 to 75% on every antique, vintage, and serendipitous treasure at the Widow. Held in May and October, the semi-annual event has attracted hundreds of people to Widow at Windsor Antiques in downtown Springfield, rain or shine. Congratulations to Widow at Windsor for their outstanding retail promotion. The award for outstanding new construction goes to the State House Inn and the new Governor's Ballroom.
The desperate need for meeting and banquet space combined with the abandonment of the old state comptroller's office and former Springfield Bowl made the decision to build the governor's ballroom easy. Demolition of the bowling alley began May 2009 and the governor's ballroom opened the end of April 2010. What a transformation. Response to the property has been outstanding, attracting weddings, political receptions, luncheons, and more. The hotel now has a full-time wedding planner on staff as well as a five-star catering service. During a time when financing a project of this size may not have been feasible, the Central District Tax Increment Funds assisted downtown hotel in creating jobs and contributing to the vitality of downtown Springfield. Congratulations to General Manager Daryl Smith and the State House and Governor's Ballroom for Best New Construction Award of 2010. The award for outstanding renovation goes to the Carpenter Street Hotel. The hotel was basically taken down to the studs and drywall. Everything, and I mean everything, was replaced, including furniture, carpet, tile, lighting, countertops, artwork, wall vinyl and paint, bedding, and decor items. All rooms were upgraded with 32-inch flat screen TVs, curved shower rods, hookless shower curtains, shiny new ceramic tile. To bring things into the 21st century, complimentary wireless internet throughout the hotel, as well as complimentary hot breakfast and a fitness center with new cardio equipment and weights. Not to forget the outside, major upgrades were made to the landscaping and parking facilities. All of this was done in one month, July through August 2010. Hotel Ventures Management and the Hospital Sisters Health System Group have a lot to be proud of with this lovely boutique hotel treasure in the heart of Springfield's Medical District. Congratulations to the Carpenter Street Hotel for outstanding renovations. The 2010 holiday walks were taken to a new level with the addition of a location that provided a warm, safe indoor space for all children's activities from December 1 until December 22. The Outstanding Public-Private Partnership Award goes to the National Museum of Surveying, its staff, and its volunteers. <laughs> the National Museum greeted between 650 to 700 holiday revelers during the four-week period. There was wonderful free entertainment from Lynn Rainey and Tiz Trains, the DePriest Puppets, Tim the Twister, and Sunshine the Clown. This partnership served a twofold objective. One, to provide indoor space for children's holiday activities, and two, to give a boost to this new museum and share the wonder of this interesting field. Many took advantage of the free abbreviated tours of the museum. Guests listened to the dynamic story of surveying, in its role in the development of America, and they saw the world as they have never seen it through the science on a sphere. Congratulations and thank you to downtown's newest world-class educational venue for outstanding public-private partnership award, the National Museum for Surveying. The award for outstanding interior renovation goes to PNC Bank at One Old Capitol Plaza. When the new rules come down from corporate, you got to do what you got to do to make things work. And the folks at PNC needed to separate their immediate banking transaction areas from a shared space in the spacious PNC bank lobby. They called on renowned Springfield architect Bruce Ferry with Ferry and Associates to help them out. They came up with modern glass wood walled structure that was minimally invasive but totally functional for their needs. This smart, comprehensive design works well for bank employers and customers alike. The project took around five months and totaled approximately $150,000. Congratulations to PNC for an outstanding interior renovation and great addition to already fantastic property. We would like to take just a moment, if you don't mind, uh, our wait staff tonight did a fabulous job. Would you please give it up for them?
Awesome job, as every year. The fireworks were wonderful. The dessert was wonderful. The food was wonderful. It was all wonderful. Have you enjoyed yourself so far? <laughs> this year, this year, we're doing something a little different for our television viewers. Tonight, television viewers, you will have a chance to win a 40-inch television. Donate it, sponsor. All of you, this send in your address to P.O. Box 11 with a page description of why company Love Springfield. And the winners will be announced in, or in February. Thank you very much. Make sure you take advantage of that offer. Now for our awards. DSI's Green Advocate Award goes to downtown's very own Mr. Green Jeans, Chef Michael Higgins of Maldener's Restaurant. Michael, now you've got to listen close to this. Michael is a DSI board member and chef sponsor for Old Capital Farmers Market, and he is always talking green, but not only talks the talk, he walks the walk. Maldeners uses only biodegradable to-go containers, silverware, beverage cups, and coffee cups for all catering services. Michael's restaurant is a no-foam zone for sure. He uses bottled water in either glass or biodegradable bottles. All glass bottles and containers are recycled regardless of their color, and he recycles cardboard, unless, of course, it is wax cardboard. When it comes to cleaning his act, Michael chooses all green cleaning products to keep the restaurant spick and span. While talking the talk, Michael serves as a member and board member of Downtown Springfield Incorporated. He is a member of the Inner City Coalition of Old Neighborhoods. He is a member of the Mayor's Bicycle Advisory Council. He is a member of Springfield Green Business Network. He is a member of Buy Fresh, Buy Local. He is a sponsor of Springfield's Old Capital Farmers Market. He is a member, he is an advisory, he's on the advisory committee for Springfield Farmers Market, supporter of Slow Food of Springfield, active participant in local flavors, supporter of local farms and farmers markets, and many more green activities. That's it. Congratulations, Michael Higgins. Downtown Springfield Incorporated's Heritage Tourism Award goes to a living history program coordinated by the Springfield Convention and Visitors Bureau. During the summer of 2010, a grant from the Illinois Office of Tourism empowered tourism partners to implement a groundbreaking new program called History Comes Alive. Staff members and volunteers from the Illinois Executive Mansion, the National Park Service, the Historic Sites of Illinois Historic Preservation Agency, and the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Museum, the Springfield Convention and Visitors Bureau, the Abraham Lincoln National Heritage Area, and numerous businesses and organizations fill the downtown with reenactors, period music, and theater performances. What made 2010 an award-winning year was the fact that all of this revenue generating and crowd pleasing activity stretched into the evening like never before and lasted seven days a week between mid-June and mid-August. Costumed interpreters presented daily living history vignettes, historical talks, specialty tours, live portrayals and demonstrations. Guest residents raved about the unprecedented lineup of evening activities including the very moving flag lowering ceremonies at the Lincoln Tomb, ice cream socials at the Vachel Lindsay Home, concerts at the Executive Mansion, Lincoln presentations at the Great Western Depot, and humanities programming at the Old State Capitol. The coordination and leadership from the tourism team at Springfield Convention and Visitors Bureau made this all possible through outstanding marketing, planning, and convention services. For their work in helping history come alive in a new way in our downtown, DSI is very pleased to present its 2010 Heritage Tourism Award to the Springfield Convention and Visitors Bureau. The award for creative new event 
goes to the Springfield Area Arts Council and Seraphim for an evening at the opera. An evening at the opera was the joint brainchild of Jody Kinsler and Penny Wallen Creel of the Springfield Area Arts Council. Seraphim was founded by Jody in 2005 as a group where professional vocal artists could find a vehicle for their talent after college years. Seraphim had performed for the Artists on the Square events on several occasions, and Penny had inquired if they would consider doing a fundraiser for the Arts Council. Little did she know what Seraphim would cook up. An evening at the opera featured arias, duets, and ensemble selections from a number of classical and light operas in a gourmet dinner theater setting. The event met with a sold house and inquiries about next year. Seraphim members, Jody Kinsler, Eleanor Van Deventer, Sally Zudi, Sally Smith, Megan Turner, Beth Maxwell, Jane Nicoletta, and Liz Burnson, with special guests, Lyle Van Deventer, Jamie Greenwald, Bill Furry, Dale Rogers, and Richard McDaniel. Expanding a business in this economy cannot be easy, but the Prairie Art Alliance has done it. The award for outstanding business expansion goes to the Prairie Art Alliance Gallery 2. The Prairie Art Alliance Steering Committee set goals such as increasing sales, membership, and gallery space, which resulted in Prairie Art Alliance Gallery 2. The board initially voted to rent their current space at 221 to 223 South 6th Street for a six-month period from March 2010 to August 2010. With the huge success of this venture, the lease was renewed for another 12 months. Over 140 Central Illinois artists are represented at both galleries, representing over 1,100 sales transactions from March to December 2010 and nearly 9,500 visitors. Just stop in at a First Friday event and have a glass of wine and some appetizers, and you too will be a part of this wonderful expansion project. Congratulations to the Prairie Art Alliance Gallery 2 for outstanding business expansion. <laughs> the award for outstanding volunteer effort goes to the Elijah Isles House volunteer staff for their work on flood recovery. On Wednesday afternoon, May 26, 2010, Springfield received four and a half inches of rain in four hours. The Elijah House, the Elijah Isles House lower level, home of the Farrell and Ann Gay Museum of Springfield History, was flooded up to 18 inches. One would think that these folks are really lucky, but luck, luck had absolutely nothing to do with it. House docents and volunteers contributed their talent and time to the great many tasks at hand. People showed up to hold doors closed to prevent rushing floodwaters from coming in. Floors were mopped, exhibits moved, and generous donations from local individuals and businesses provided funds for the costs involved. Insurance did not cover expenses since the damage was a result of flooding. The historic upper sections of the house were untouched and no historic artifacts were damaged. Thanks to the Elijah Isles House volunteers for their dedication and continued support of this magnificent historic site they received the award for outstanding volunteer effort. A very special award is always Volunteer of the Year. Every year we have a very hard time choosing because DSI has so many outstanding people that go the extra mile time after time after time. We believe that the volunteer hour is the most valuable above all other hours one puts in a day. People give up hours of their free time, like reading a book and spending time with family or just simply taking a nap to volunteer. We are so humbled by the amount of hours that are donated to helping make downtown great. This person not only lends a lot of his time to us, but an extraordinary amount of talent, which in fair market costs would not be within our budget. He has been an office assistant, strung hundreds of holiday wreaths, put up trees, sold raffle tickets at this dinner, helped load trucks, set up plant gardens, sold tickets at events, delivered ice, and most importantly, he has designed and provided the decor for DSI's last four dinners on less than a shoestring budget. 
we ask him if he could do it for under $40 budget, and somehow he pulls it together. The DSA volun DSI Volunteer of the Year Award for 2010 goes to Terry Castleman. Okay, I moved to Chicago when I was 16 years old with $12. I was very, very lucky. I met a, a lady named Betty Wirtz that seemed to help me out a little bit. I didn't know she had any money. Uh, but, anyway <laughs> but anyway, when I moved to Chicago when I was 16, it was against the law for two men to even dance in a gay bar. Now I'm up here getting this award, and Ellen makes about $30 million a year. God bless America. Yeah, ditto. That's serendipitous right there. That's it. All right, we're done. And next year, the host of this event, Terry Castleman. You clearly don't need me anymore. <laughs> Oftentimes, lifetime. All right, you got fans. <laughs> Sir, what's your name? No, it's, no, it's, sorry, no, it's all right, it's all right, here we go. Oftentimes, Lifetime Achievement Awards are given in the concluding years of a person's career or when that person has slowed down a bit, hopefully enjoying their exit into the sunset. Well, tonight's award recipient is far from finishing or riding into any sunset. As a matter of fact, I would venture to say that this is probably in one of the busiest, most demanding phases of her, per of her professional lifetime. She started with the Springfield Arts Council in 1993 as an assistant director for arts and education, and then went on to be the executive director of the Springfield Art Association in 2000. She became program liaison in the Arts Haven McClurndon School Program. In 2001, she went back to the Arts Council in its 25th year to serve as program ad coordinator then membership coordinator. Finally, in November of that same year, she was appointed assistant director. Since 2009, in the absence of an executive director, she has been serving as acting director of the Arts Council, overseeing the very large and intricate first night event, which showcases dozens of artists and performers. She administers the arts and education program, oversees the artists on the plaza performances six months out of the year, and is a state coordinator of the National Poetry Out Loud Scholarship Competition. While she has been serving in an acting capacity for nearly two years and was offered the executive director position, she feels the focus should be on the council's programs and services, not titles and salaries. Her passion and dedication for the arts is inspiring. It has made a difference in so many lives in our community. If it were not for her commitment to the arts council, artists, and our community would not would definitely be deprived of so much opportunity and talent. The award for lifetime achievement goes to Penny Wallen Creel. What can I say but thank you? I'm speechless. <laughs> I truly am speechless. But this is wonderful. It's a great honor to receive this award. I love the arts. I love Springfield. I'm a Springfield native. I came back after 30 years in California to raise my family here in Springfield. It's wonderful. Thank you so much.
Last year, I introduced her to you as Victoria Clemens. This year, I introduced her to you as Victoria Ringer. She's coming now to make a presentation. Give it up for Victoria Ringer. I think you introduced my uh, husband to be as Greg, and it's Doug, but, you know. <clears throat> A night of surprises, isn't it? Two years ago, we created a new award that recognized a recipient, a recipient support and advocacy of all things downtown. Paul O'Shea's been a winner, and Alex has been a winner, and we have a new winner this year. This year, when the nominating committee sat down in November, we knew exactly who should get this award. Downtown Springfield has been in the midst of a very successful revitalization effort for several years. True and meaningful revitalization takes about 30 years. The past eight years, downtown has seen more changes than ever before. We needed a knight in shining armor to maintain the momentum we had created <clears throat> and take steps just a little bit further. The development of Springfield Green provided planters, trees and hanging baskets that brought a beautiful fresh ambiance to downtown. The installation of new historically appropriate streetscape, lights, benches, and signage helped residents and visitors alike find their way and appreciate all that we knew that was downtown. Electrical transformers were buried, alleys paved, and streets overlaid. Events and projects of community groups and organizations were promoted throughout the year, both local and national, because he knew it was good for the city. He always included DSI in discussions about downtown projects and initiatives and allowed us to be part of the input. We never felt like we were not part of the city's team. This man always knew that the center of our city should serve as the premier example of just how wonderful this city can be and what it has to offer. There was nothing that made him prouder than to brag about Springfield. We hope that we continue to make him proud in the years to come. Please roll the video. Mayor Davlin really needs no introduction, but because he spent time writing one, I feel compelled to read it. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new, all right, forget it. That's another speech, leftover speech from 1863. Forget that one. But it worked really well in 1863. In April, we'll celebrate the opening of the Presidential Museum which will greatly complement the already busy Presidential Library, and which, by the way, welcomed more than 1,700 visitors to first night on New Year's Eve. Now, think about planning for a combination homecoming, prom, graduation, wedding, family reunion, times, say, 100. That should give you a sense of the momentum, the enthusiasm, and the scope of where we are before the museum opens. Uh, but it's going to be an interesting day tomorrow, and I hope to come away from that, and I hope the president comes away from that uh, with some very positive uh, goals that we're all going to set for ourselves and, and try and make this recession uh, uh, affecting us all uh, as little as it possibly can. Uh, we certainly know in the city of Springfield how the economy has uh, hindered not only our growth, but also what it's hap what's happened at a municipal level as far as our finances. Um, so I do I definitely look forward to tomorrow. I get my snowblower out for the first time, and uh, naturally, it doesn't work, not at all. So I take it over to Kuntz, uh, to the Toro dealer, and, and I take it in there, and they said, we'll probably have it back for you today. So I was hoping that would happen. I happened to know the forecast, and so I called late in the afternoon, they said, well, we've got some bad news. And I said, what's that? And they said, your governor's broke. I said, I know that. They're impeaching him. What about my snowblower? <laughs> and literally, my governor broke on my snowblower, but it's, um, it's, it's getting fixed. But A.W. Sickings, for those of you that don't remember, um, is the exact site of the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library, is where my grandfather's business was. So we've had some longtime family roots in downtown Springfield, and it's so much fun to be able to see that and, and know that your family was, was part of that. <laughs> Seems that we have had much discussion about birds in the downtown area. We have had bird poop discussions, <laughs> bird brain discussions, bird feathers. Bird stompings, bird poison, bird shootings, bird flocking. Oh, yes, those flocking birds. <laughs> Why, you never want to drink wine before you come up here. <laughs> so much discussion about those flocking birds. 
has also been about the contract with Mr. James Souls, the Bird Whisperer, and his multi-year contract paid for, I might mention, with downtown TIF funds that came from directly from most of you in this room. Somewhat of a strange relationship, but your very own Victoria Clemens and myself have started Davlin and Clemens Bird Flocking Removal Service. <laughs> Our motto is, we will flick every flocking bird to paradise. <laughs> Victoria, would you come up here, please? <laughs> now, we're only selling 150 of these at $1,000 a piece. Yes, you guessed it. We'll be charging $150,000 by the time we finish to get rid of these flocking birds but it's much less than we're paying for today's contract with the Bird Whisperer, and we are willing to sell you our secrets. We'd like to demonstrate how this works. I, I have one question. <laughs> All right. One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you. Louis Pasteur once said, chance favors the prepared mind. I need to steal apart from old Louis and say chance favors the prepared. We'll definitely be prepared. Like that teenager, we embrace the moment. For us in this great city, there are no obstacles, only challenges, and we will be ready. And then we're going to party like it's 2005. Thank you. The 2010 Award for Downtown Advocate goes to Mayor Timothy J. Thank you. I can't look at her crying because it'll. What's funny was when. When we were sitting at the table, I looked at Victoria, and I started making my notes on the back of this. I looked, and we're looking, my brother's texting me from the corner, saying, when do we go up? And all of a sudden, I look and realize we're at the very bottom. And I said, Victoria, why would you put us at the end and then put wine at our table? Which is funny, my dad obviously had the same issue. <laughs> uh, downtown Springfield has always been so important to our family. For, for so many years, I can remember the very first time I remember my, my first memory of downtown, my dad had gotten a new job and he had to go buy a suit. <laughs> so we went to the hub. I think my sister was maybe one. We went to the hub and then we went to Coney Island to go meet my grandpa, Robert Davlin and, and our family and the St. Patrick's Day Parade. I, I, I'm sure you all know and I'm sure you've all seen us there a few times. It's one of our very, very favorite moments. Um, so he's, he's always been extremely proud of downtown. He's always been very involved with downtown. And I think one of the things that made my dad extremely successful in his tenure as mayor, and the same thing that has made downtown Springfield so successful, is that he brought people together. And DSI does the same thing, brings people together. Um, it, it's, it's everybody from every different business, every different walk of life, coming together with one important goal, and that's Springfield. And as we were talking earlier, we talked about there's a new administration taking over, and there's a lot of quality people running for this new administration. And I can only ask, I can, I can challenge you, I can encourage you, whoever our, our new administration is, that you do the same. You bring Springfield together, you have one common goal, and that is, that is Springfield. And another thing, while I'm talking about this new administration, Frank, where are you, Frank? I don't see you. Oh, okay, is he gone? Well, all I have to say is, Frank, $5, all you have to do is use the word kumquat, in any sentence, and Rich Brown will give you 250 bucks. It's really easy. <laughs> so I, I do want to thank, on behalf of our, our entire family, um, I, I can't tell you how thankful we are, how grateful we are to so many people who have reached out to us and made this hard time in our life a whole lot easier. And your, your prayers and your thank yous and everything that you have done for us has really, really helped. And so um, thank you to Downsound Springfield, Inc. Thank you to Victoria Clemens. She's absolutely wonderful and, and has always been wonderful and is a great friend of our family. So on behalf of my dad, it's a complete honor to tell you thank you. Uh, we, we really appreciate it. Thank you, Tara and Kathleen, Tim's sister and his son, Ryan. I appreciate I couldn't get that out early. I apologize.
But, but you know, Anne, the colleague, had tissue up here, and I wasn't even ready. Um, I want to thank all of you for coming tonight. Um, we're, stick around. Um, we're going to do a, a, a little raffle and, and things later. But to our television viewers, on behalf of Downtown Springfield, Inc., congratulations to all the award winners. Sincere, sincere thank you to Steve Thomas, our host, who is wonderful and always just comes up with stuff. And he's, he's doing this ad-libbing all the time. And also, thank you to all of you who have helped our organization to create and maintain a vibrant downtown. And we're going to keep on trying all the way through this recession. So thank you, and good night to our television viewers.